Hello and welcome to our latest HoopCast. Florida playing at Georgia on Wednesday night, of course. Kevin will be up there. I won't. You won't be able to watch it, but they're still going to play the game. And Kevin, if you remember just a couple weeks ago when Florida beat Georgia, that was a game where Billy afterwards was not happy with his defense and was pretty critical of this team despite the win. Yeah, and uh, as you know, it's only going to get uh, tougher to defend mm -hmm. on the perimeter because Billy Humphrey, who was not there the first time, uh, their best three-point shooter will be there this time after serving that uh, three-game suspension after the uh, arrest on uh, underage drinking. So it's, it's going to be even tougher for Florida to uh, defend Georgia on the perimeter this time around. And Georgia's played very well at home this season. Uh, excellent home team uh, has already posted wins against Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. So anyone that thinks that this is uh, going to be a, a layup or a gimme for Florida, I think is sorely mistaken. Yeah, it's kind of weird because uh, this is this is if you look at the remaining four games, this seems to be the most winnable. But it's not an easy win by any means. Florida's got to go there, play well. They're got to shoot well, Kevin. They're going to have to uh, make some shots early. Uh, this is a Georgia team that, and I, and I just watched them play uh, on on Saturday against Vandy at Vandy, where it's tough to play. Hung in there, hung in there, hung there, in there, and then at the end, they, they just can't seem to get it done. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do with their number situation, obviously, you know, only having eight scholarship guys. Of course, right. Florida only has nine, but, uh, you know, I, I saw last week the end of that game against Kentucky at Kentucky where it seemed like no one could hit a shot, right. you know. Kentucky couldn't hit a shot. Georgia was playing really tough defense, but, uh, you know, at the other end, Georgia was airballing three. Sunday out of gains. They weren't getting uh, uh, quality shots at the basket. Dave Bliss wasn't able to get anything inside. So I think this could be a grind out. This could be a game that, you know, might be in the 40s or the 50s. This could really be a, a grinded out, ugly game, which maybe it's good that it's not on live TV. That's right. <laughs> hey, you remember last year, I think it was, because Georgia doesn't put a lot of people in that place. And there was a lot of Gator fans. There was almost a home court advantage for Florida. I expect it not to be the same because that was a special team that everybody wanted to see. But I don't think it's going to be a tough environment necessarily to play in Stegman Coliseum. Well, yeah, they said that they had, a, I saw on their website, they had 1,000 reserved tickets left. And who knows how many students are going to show right. up or, or bypass it. So uh, it's certainly, uh, you know, I, I remember that game four years ago, uh, you know, with uh, Matt Walsh and Christian Dreyer leaving the team, of course, when they mm. stormed the court. That and, was uh, beautiful. That was, uh, that was uh, definitely a different era. And that's the last time that Georgia beat Florida at home. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, this sets up as an opportunity for, uh, for maybe Georgia to, uh, to end that streak. Uh, uh, you know, because uh, e even after Florida's win against South Carolina, you know, they're not hitting on all cylinders yet and, and really need this win to kind of propel them through this four-game stretch. You know, one, one thing that'll be interesting, Kevin, is to see whether this week off, and I, I know it wasn't a week off, but it was a week without a game. Last time, it didn't seem to help them. If anything, it, it took them out of a rhythm they were in. Whether this kind of maybe is a jump start they need, because obviously going these last four games, NCAA tournament on the line, uh, these are huge games, and we may see a little bit from from the Gators on Wednesday night, whether uh, this is something that refreshed them and, and, you know, the freshmen got a little life underneath them. Yeah, and, uh, you know, of course that break in January, the fatigue wasn't the same factor right. as it is in February later in the season. And, you know, Nick said, uh, Nick Kalaitha said that, uh, you know, maybe the rest will do him some good and, and some practice time too and things to work on as well. And, and certainly they have to get uh, a little bit more inside from, from Spates. And Alex Tyus has shown a little bit more from late. He could be yeah. a, a factor down the stretch. But uh, they have to get that balance of inside to outside scoring um, in, in order to, you know, make a run at this thing. And, you know, you've got four games left. And uh, I think they need to get a, at least two to, to even talk about the NCAA tournament going into the SEC tournament. Everybody remembers Sunday out of games having a huge game against Florida, 32 points. They didn't get much from anybody else in that game. Of course, they didn't have Billy Humphrey. But uh, the funny thing is, watching their game against Vandy, you would expect it to be a grinded out game. Instead, neither team played defense, including Georgia, which is unusual <laughs> for them. So you know that Dennis Felton's been on their rear ends about uh, defense. But Kevin, the thing I wonder is, I mean, they're what three and nine now in, in the conference. I mean, what's there to play for if you're Georgia? It, it's not on TV. You know, if this was an ESPN game, you could kind of see Georgia yeah. getting fired up for it. But you wonder if there's a whole lot left in their mental tanks as, as they approach this game. Yeah, and uh, of course that, you know, the energy on defense really comes from that. It comes from something right. to play for. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, any team, and, and George is the kind of team, if they hit some shots early and they get some confidence, yeah. then you'll probably see them grind it out and work harder on the defensive end. I was really surprised in the Florida game when they hit some shots early against South Carolina. They didn't transfer that to the defensive end of the floor because in the past yeah. they had done a better job of that. And uh, that's something that... Uh, 
you know, uh, definitely they're going to have to do in this game. And, and if they don't hit shots, it's going to be even worse for them. It's kind of weird that we're sitting here with four games left in the season, and, you know, there's not a lot of teams on the bubble. I mean, we know Tennessee, and I'm talking about the SEC. Tennessee's in, obviously, probably going to be a number one seed. Uh, you've got Vanderbilt in. Old Mississippi State looks like they're in. Arkansas, I think they're on the bubble still. I mean, a collapse at the end, they could be out. And then, of course, Florida kind of on the outside looking in at the bubble. I'm not sure there's anybody else that's really got can do anything. Well, Ole Miss has totally collapsed. I'm not sure who else in this conference is going to have any legitimate shot of making the NCAA tournament. Well, I think, you know, looking ahead, the two games that you look at, Mississippi State and Kentucky, are probably two games uh, that, that could result in, in his, uh, playing games, you know, especially yeah. if Kentucky loses uh, next week to Tennessee on the road, then all of a sudden I think they're back on the bubble a little bit again. So uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, these last two weeks kind of shape up as uh, important weeks for Florida to uh, to make some kind of impression uh, kind of going forward. But, uh, you know, Bracketology, strangely enough, in their last projections, they had Florida as an 11 seed playing in Tampa with uh, Kansas <laughs> State as a six. So you know you're, that, go, yeah. you're going against, but you're going against Michael Beasley, and then you've got Georgetown as a three, a possible rematch with Georgetown again uh, from from two years ago. A little ago. different team, yeah. A little <laughs> bit of a yeah, and, and no one to you know deal with Hibbert inside. But at the same time, if you're in Tampa, you have a bit of a home crowd advantage. But uh, of course, bracketology only matters for the 65, not for actually who's playing because exactly. they never end up that way. But <laughs> yeah, if they could go to Tampa, hey, look, if they put Florida and Beijing against. Uh, the Chinese national team, I don't think anybody complain right now. I think they just love to be in the tournament. And we're going to see what this team's made of, uh, Kevin. You know, we, this team, and I made the analogy to football, they started fast with a young team, then they had their little collapse. Uh, the football team did finish strong, uh, the uh, Capital One Bowl notwithstanding, but they did finish strong the last four games of the year and, uh, you know, put themselves in a position where at least they had a chance at the SEC. Uh, basketball, for them to have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament, I mean, I know they're young. I know it's been a tough hold. I know they got a tough schedule. But, hey, th- this is an opportunity to prove you're worthwhile. Yeah, and to prove for the freshmen how far have they come, how much have they developed um, from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. If we see, you know, regression in these last yeah. four games, then you have to be really concerned about this class. But if they kind of step up to the plate, you know, and I thought we saw a lot from Nick Calathis, certainly in the South Carolina game. I think we're seeing a little bit more as I said before, from Alex Tice, Adam Allen hit some big three-point shots against South Carolina uh, that really helped them in the first half. And, of course, you know, Chandler Parsons had the big game against Georgia before where he had 18 points. So we're going to have to see a lot from this uh, freshman class. They're going to need to contribute down the road. And, and you have to, you know, say at this point in the season they're not freshmen anymore because they've played right. so much. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, the funny thing is um, this is a team still that is coming off its last road game where they couldn't, couldn't make anything. So, you know, it's not been a good shooting team in the row with the exception of at Tennessee where they did shoot well. Um, so I think you're, you hit around the head. I think Florida early in this game has got to make some shots and kind of keep that passion going. You know, that's one thing that we've seen happen this year where they're not shooting well. And not only does the defense drop off, but just the thrill of playing the game has dropped off. Yeah, and uh, that comes from making early shots and, and being confident. And that's a... You know, it's a difficult for a young team to figure out. You know, it's mostly yeah. you're talking about mostly a freshman and sophomore team, but they're going to have to you know find a way certainly because you know you drop this one tomorrow night, it doesn't get any easier down the stretch with uh, the three that you've got remaining, the two division leaders, Mississippi State and Tennessee at home, and then at Kentucky and at Rupp, and you know they'll be out for blood after the seven game uh, losing streak that they're going to you know be oh, yeah. playing hard on Senior Day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week with a look at Mississippi State, and and eventually we're going to do an NCAA. Uh, even if Florida's not in it, we'll still do an NCAA hoop cast, and we'll talk about uh, what we think about it. But I'm going to make a bold prediction right now. One, Kentucky's going to make the tournament, which I never would have dreamed of. Two, Vanderbilt will not get out of the first weekend because I still think that they, that gym hurts them in the, in the postseason. And uh, three, uh, this is a real bold prediction. I think Tennessee's going to the Final Four. <laughs> I'm way out there with that one. Way out there. I'll just say that I think Florida's going to make it. I think they're going to find a way to make it in these last four. They're going to split these last four and, uh, and win a game in the SEC tournament and get in with 23 wins, just sure. barely. But so, they're make so, it. Don't, so don't worry. The, the expert says they're getting in, so you got nothing <laughs> to worry about. But I tell you what, it'll be fun in the SEC tournament, Kevin. When we get there, there'll be a couple of teams probably needing to win to get there. I, I think you may see an SEC tournament. We'll talk, obviously, more about that when we do our hoopcast for it. But where a team wins it from Thursday. I just got a funny feeling about it, the way this league has been. 
possibility, you know, four four games in four days certainly it's difficult. Hard. And uh, South Carolina almost did it to Florida a couple of years ago. I mean, they had them on the ropes. I was there when Arkansas did it, which was an amazing feat, and and playing, you know, forty minutes of hell, and and still was able to do it for four straight games. So. We'll see what, if, if somebody's able to do that. But I'm looking forward to that. Can't wait for the SEC tournament. Look forward to doing a hoop cast for that. We'll be back next or later this week after the Georgia game. Look at the Georgia game. Also talk about Florida's game cup coming with Mississippi State at home, 4 o'clock game on Saturday. Until then, Kevin Brockway of the Gainesville Sun, Pat Dilley, sports columnist of the Gainesville Sun, saying so long from the Sunshine State.